one-way analysis of variance in SPSS. Does the person endorsing a campaign matter to the willingness to donate to a charity for people seeing the campaign? In this example dataset, the endorser is a categorical variable with three groups. A nobody who is not a celebrity, George Clooney and Angelina Jolie. If we want to investigate the association between a categorical variable containing three or more groups and a numerical variable, such as respondents' willingness to donate, we must use one-way analysis of variance. We find one-way analysis of variance under compare means. We must select a dependent variable and let us select willingness to donate at the end of the campaign. We also must select a categorical variable as the factor. And now we may set some additional options that are important with a categorical variable containing three or more groups. We usually do post hoc tests with the Bonferroni correction. It's not the best correction, but it's simple and it works. Under options we need descriptives to get the group means and we need a homogeneity of variance test to check assumptions. And if you like, a means plot to communicate the results. With SPSS version 27 and higher you can also get either squared if you check the box labeled estimate effect size for overall tests. That will do, let's paste and run the command. We receive a lot of output. Under descriptives we see the group means. They tell us that willingness to donate is on average lower if there is no celebrity endorser. We can check the size of the groups here. The groups are of fairly equal size. The difference between the smallest group, which has size 45, and the largest group, containing 49 respondents, is less than 10% so we meet the assumption that the groups are of equal size. If we would not meet the assumption, we would have to look at the homogeneity of variance test. This test should not be significant, because we do not want to reject the null hypothesis of equal variances in the population. With SPSS version 27 and higher, several tests of homogeneity are reported. If none of them is statistically significant, we are good. In this case, all p-values are well above 0.05. Now, let us go to the test results. An analysis of variance reports sums of squares for the variation between groups and the variation within groups. It also reports the associated degrees of freedoms and mean squares. The test statistic is an f-value, which is 7.4 here, with a p-value that is well below 0.05. So, we reject the null hypothesis. We are confident that the groups have different average willingness to donate in the population. E to squared tells us the size of the differences between the groups. It is 0.096 here. So, if we know the endorser seen by a respondent, we can predict nearly 10% of the differences in willingness to donate among respondents. If you are working with SPSS version 26 or older, you must calculate e to squared by hand, which is explained in another video. In one-way analysis of variance, the null hypothesis states that all groups have equal means in the population. If we reject this hypothesis, the next question is, where are the differences? Which groups have different means in the population? We must scroll to the post hoc tests to answer this question. Here we find t-tests comparing two groups at a time, but the p-values are corrected for capitalization on chance. For example, compare average willingness to donate between nobody and George Clooney as endorsers. Respondents who have seen nobody are on average less willing to donate than respondents who saw George Clooney. The difference is more than one point on the 10 point scale, which is quite a lot. According to the p-value, the difference is statistically significant. And the 95% confidence interval tells us that the difference will be most likely between 1.9 and 0 
the results are similar for the comparison between Nobody and Angelina Jolie. But if we compare Clooney to Jolie, the p-value is 1. This difference is clearly not statistically significant. We can also conclude this because the confidence interval includes 0. And as you can see, the confidence interval is almost symmetrical around 0. There is really no reason to conclude that average willingness to donate is higher for respondents who saw Clooney or for those who saw Jolie. Finally, if we want to present the results, we can use the means plot, where we see that the average score of respondents without a celebrity endorser really is lower than the average scores for the respondents who saw one of the celebrities. This concludes the micro lecture on one-way ANOVA in SPSS.